The oh yeah, this disastrous ending of the last episode with this tickle machine what and this weird impression. What are you doing with your face? Is this a joke to you? It's not a joke to anyone. All my wrinkles aren't like this at all. In his early days, his crow's feet were 0.6 centimeters long. Wow, that is detailed. Wow, that is a lot of knowledge about All Might. That is way too much. I thought Deku was bad. <laughs> but you don't even know that much? <gasps> For Every corner of shame. his office is filled with All Might gear. I did notice that, yeah. The 10th anniversary poster that was never on sale for the public! Oh my god! <laughs> Definitely a serious All Might fanboy. Which sort of gives more intrigue and respect to the fact that he was able to call All Might out on some of the flaws that he saw. When you like someone like that, you know, if you like someone to the point that you're counting the, the centimeters on their crow's feet, you're beyond respect for that person. That is obsession. So I feel like the trap there is to become a yes man. You know, or just to completely lose your self-identity in the hopes that you can do things to please that person and get them to notice you. So for him to point out potential problems with All Might is sort of a big deal, I think. Although that is how it goes sometimes, right? Like comfort can develop through the course of the relationship and you end up like sort of gravitating towards more equal footing. You can see yourself out. The Vinegar River incident! Well, that went well. It's fine now! Do you know why? Because I am here! The drowning kid keeps drowning, All Might. <laughs> now's not the time. The river into vinegar. Do it while swimming. Dang the stings. That's mine. <laughs> Those narrowed eyes. That's the look I chose That's to impersonate the impression. earlier. The vinegar look, of course. Vinegar face. Very niche. I like it. And I believe they mentioned it briefly on the widely run television special entitled A Look Back. How are they ever going to get any work done in this office? It's just going to be All Might talk all day, 24-7. You were just testing me. What? Oh no! It's just that I don't, since All Might I don't is think a teacher that's it. in my school, I never but really get a chance to geek out about him! Deku just won him over. Best friends. A true fan. An underclassman at my school. He totally failed to make Sir laugh. Like, massively. <laughs> I, I love his say, delivery. I think he's still making a good first impression. Yeah, yeah. He's leading with other positive qualities. It, it never was going to be humor. Never. You want to do a work study here because you think that doing so will make you stronger. Yes, sir! Please let me! I wonder what All Might saw in him. He seems so different from, from Deku, or from the ideals All Might might be looking for. Like, he's so intense and heavy. You have to understand that this will be nothing like the week-long internships that you students take on so casually. There was nothing casual about that week-long thing, but... Four months all right. And we'll be paid wages. Paid wages?! Look at Deku getting paid. Which means your classmates will pull ahead of you. If I worry about what everyone else is doing, cares about school I'll never if you're be number doing one. Your thing. <laughs> Did he miss? Because I am not approving this. Deku, take your take your talent somewhere else. So why would I add you on? You don't need this, Deku. You don't need you don't need to hear this and like be put up to tickle tickle torture and be forced to make jokes. You're you're better than this. Why is Mirio here? I'm waiting for the redeeming qualities of this guy, because I know they're there, right? All Might chose him for a reason as a sidekick. That's no small thing. Mirio respects him, and he is definitely a kid with a great head on his shoulders. So what is it? How can you contribute to society? How can you be useful to others? You're right. I need to find out how I can help the world. At least Deku takes this as an opportunity for self-discovery, as he does. It's time to show me what you would bring to the table. Okay. Using actions, not words. Okay. A task? A challenge? At least he gives him a chance to prove himself. What does he bring to the table, I wonder? Night Eye. Sir! Yes, yes sir! Once more with feeling! Mirio loves yes, it. Yes, sir! Mirio is like the perfect embodiment of just like living with a smile on your face. This doesn't sound great for Midoriya. His future just started looking dark. Up against <laughs> Sir's quirk, the odds are grim. Don't concern yourself with what happens to the room. Oh, he d he wouldn't. He wouldn't have. Deku and property damage go hand in hand, speaking of skills. An approach from the front, but it's merely a faint and a failed grab. And then another jump attack to no avail. I can see everything. I knew this it! This is embarrassing. Oh my god, he's making him look so pathetic. But what I is thought you were his quirk? To show me your usefulness. Boredom? One minute passes, he backs up briefly. <laughs> Finally understanding that he can't overcome my foresight. Foresight. He has the power for the next hour to see the choices that person will make. That is extremely overpowered. All Might chose wrong after all. Mirio should have inherited the power. What are you talking about? Chose wrong after all? Oh right, he doesn't know. Yeah. How can you succeed him? Ouch. Does he know that? That was my Could question too. And All Might choose him. Though I don't think Togoda would hold it against Deku or have any bad feelings about it. There is a candidate who is far worthier of inheriting one for all than you. This feels like a little bit of a grudge to me. Feels like in some sense he, you know, he, was, he made up his mind or had a bias from the beginning. But he doesn't know Deku and he's about to find out, I think. I'll go beyond! 
so he can't react even if he can foresee my movements. How do you beat foresight? Do you make it a mystery to yourself? He wanted me to have his power. He made me eat his DNA. I'm going to take that stamp from you. I swear. Did the trick yourself into... Yeah, I don't know. How do you do this? How do you do it? With a lot of heart, I guess is the key. Two minutes from now, you'll be slumped on the floor with neither the seal Two nor minutes the ahead, damn. Fear and indecision are luxuries a top tier hero cannot afford. Someone who understands that will always act with vision and purpose. The more I see, the more convinced I become that you will ultimately fail. This is a rough period for Deku in a lot of ways. Like, I think in all honesty, this trial and this introduction would work better if we had already established Night Eye as someone whose opinion is worthwhile to us, when so far what we've seen is sort of him being stern and him having like a weird torture device. That being said, to give him some credit, I think with the other things that are going on in the show recently, and just given the stage we're at with Deku and the villains, this actually will probably turn out to be really essential and a legitimate blind spot for Deku. Like, Deku had this kind of meteoric rise where he just became super powerful and you know, his heart's in the right place, and his values are all aligned, and he's saving people. He's able to overcome through force. But recently, we've gotten Mirio, who Deku can't hit, and Night Eye, who Deku can't hit. And he lost to Bakugo. And this is all happening in a time where he is now expected to be the one because All Might's gone. And we happen to know from last episode that the villains are no joke. Like, they will destroy you. There are going to be deaths this season. And so it's not unreasonable to have super high expectations of Deku going into this work-study thing. If there's something that feels wrong about it or impure about it, it's maybe just that he seems to have a bias against Deku from the beginning. Although it's not wrong to have high expectations. And then about his like philosophy about having no fear and ultimate conviction and no hesitation, that to me seems to miss the mark somewhat for Deku just because Deku is pretty convicted and I think the extent to which he thinks is one of his positive virtues. It's not a negative thing that he's considerate. You can know who you are and what values you hold really clearly and then still sometimes be unclear about the best course of action. You know, sometimes reflection is required. And of course the ability to act is essential, but I don't think it's all one or all the other, right? It's like a, a nice healthy balance of being able to act in the time is right, being able to be confident, but also not being hasty. So I feel like Night Eye has room to grow as well as a character, which will be interesting to watch. He said I can do it! Who said that? One of your little friends? The greatest hero the world has ever seen! Didn't see that coming for some reason. I'm not giving up now! Or ever! No, <laughs> or ever. Like it or not, I am all my successor! That doesn't alter what I see. Not I'm not done. You're done. I realized I was about to step on the poster for All Might's 10th anniversary. <laughs> oh no. But it was never for sale. Don't tell me. He saved all the merch. That adds a different color to it. He formulated a strategy to defeat me and remained aware of his surroundings. So, he made you laugh after all. I that was, already no, decided I would take you it. on when I heard you were coming. Okay. <laughs> wow, you, you definitely didn't make that obvious. Regardless of All Might's mandate, you are not worthy of his power. Okay. <laughs> A little harsh, but... He believes that Togeda should have been selected instead. It makes for an unsettling dynamic. Yeah, it's off. The whole thing's off, which is kind of interesting. It's different from I usual. look forward to working with you! Yeah, there's a, it's it's weird. There's a very interesting dynamic at play here. I'm glad it's intentional. There's a lot going on at once. Like, I have very, very conflicted feelings about it, like Deku, I guess. I'm not quite sure where to put Night Eye yet. It does seem like, as I said, there are ways he can grow. I mean, Deku has the power, right? Mirio is not the one, so that's sort of neither here nor there. You gotta move on with your life. But to give him some credit, I think that, one, I suspect that even though he has misgivings about Deku being the, the chosen one, and even though he's extremely harsh, a lot of times people say those things hoping that you prove them wrong. And if he's aligned in a positive way, meaning towards, you know, the, the greater good of society and the world, which I think he is, he'll want Deku to succeed. And I think him signing Deku and spending time with Deku testing him is sort of proof of that, that that's where he's oriented. I mean, why else would he even do all this if not for the fact that he wants this to work out? Another thing that's possible, and this might be controversial, but I, I actually feel like it gives a gravity to Deku's admission into this group that maybe otherwise would not be there. Right out of college, I worked for a few years as a stockbroker and I was admitted to the firm with like 20 other people. But from the first day, my boss was absolutely brutal. I mean, he was similar to, to Night Eye in a way, in terms of the fact that he was just ultra, ultra critical and he was impossible to please. And we got all these really difficult and often menial tasks and it just felt like things were going nowhere. But what ended up happening is that because I was determined to be there, because I had a desire to work in that industry, 
and I found the intensity somewhat exciting and stimulating, I was able to sort of keep my head above water and to persevere through it. And the end result was that everyone else that I started with dropped off and I ended up becoming a full-time employee and developing a really, really, really strong bond with that boss. And to this day, he's sort of like a father figure to me. There was something about the way he pushed everyone that sort of filtered out a lot of the people who weren't serious one and also made me feel at the end of the day like I had earned something. And there's something to that, you know, it was like being put through some kind of purifying fire and coming out the other side and having bonds that formed as a result of that. And then you also form those bonds with the other people that are there because they've been through a similar process. So that I think might come true for Deku and Night Eye and also with Deku and Mirio and also um, the girl who wears ill-fitting shirts. You found an agency for your work study? Congratulations, Deku. That's awesome. Indeed. Well it's not done, feeling Midoriya. awesome right now, though, probably. Thanks, it's, it's guys. Thank you. A big challenge. You're an example to us all. <laughs> You're just so wholesome. Except... The only reason he even took me on was to convince me to give up one for all. The distance between us just keeps getting wider. I like how these two are allied now in their way. They have this in common. Thanks to all these requirements, a ton of agencies are ruled out right off the bat. We can't really blame them. Unlike the internships, we'll be directly involved. So if anything This is basically the wrong, beginning of actual the work. Yeah. Have to take responsibility for whatever happened. Oh, hey, Mr. Aizawa. Nice. I love how Aizawa's in the dorms. Hawks has invited you to work with him in Kyushu. No way! Nice. Dude, he's the number Far, three though? hero. No? That's awesome. Whoa, good job. Number three hero that we're just getting introduced to. I've been wondering about this. My only worry would be, like, did he pick me because I'm bird-themed? You know what I mean? Also, Kirishima. Apparently, Amajiki from the Big Three wants to talk to you about something. Uh -huh. Hey. I'm going over to the third year's dorm right now. I don't think I can wait either. Let's go with him. Yeah. Showing some initiative, at least. But what about Mineta? No summons for him? <laughs> no Momo invite? To really put things in perspective, though, I feel like this is how school always is. In school, every year and every test and everything you ever do is the most important thing of your entire academic career. You finish one important thing and another more important thing just pops up forever and forever, on and on and on in that way until you graduate and realize that none of it mattered. This is not only UA, but this is class 1A. They're good. Their careers are good. Only a handful of them have to worry, like Invisible Girl. And so not all of them need to necessarily do work study. In fact, they're probably better off because they don't know the storm that's coming. I mean, I don't even know the storm that's coming, although I suspect the storm is coming. And I know there are going to be casualties, and I am extremely anxious about what that will be. Although, I'm becoming increasingly convinced that Mirio is going to die, and that really is disturbing me. I started thinking that last episode, and I just, the more I see, the more I think it's it's got to be the case, because he's becoming this symbol of perfection, not only in terms of his power, but in terms of his disposition. And what a, a crippling blow that would be for the show if he were to be lost. What a win for the villains that would be. That would be dramatically very intense, narratively very intense. And we saw this episode, even though I, I didn't understand it for some reason at that time, they got these power blocking bullets, which makes Muriel vulnerable, and you got two villains that can explode people, or disintegrate people or whatever it is. I hope I'm wrong because Mirio is quickly becoming one of my favorite characters. Like he's my favorite non principal character right now, I'd say. Anyway, point is, you never know in life, like sometimes things that at first seem like obstacles have a way of having unintended benefits. It's just sort of the weird thing about life. And the reverse, you know, can also be true, of course. First years like us will just get stuck running errands and doing paperwork all day. Oh yeah, that's what happened at your internship, huh? No, it's a vacuum. Like yeah, vacuum boy. <laughs> <laughs> I start tomorrow. It's not all fun and games. It's not all celebration for Deku. It's tough. Today we will be doing patrols and surveillance. Oh, we get to see Mirio's costume. Why does he even bother with the costume? It's just gonna come off. Night Eye Agency is currently working on a secret investigation. Yeah, they're right in the thick of things too. They're like right up the villains' assets. The League of Villains. Yep, the very same. Unfortunately, we His don't have solid proof through all the seasons. into anything criminal yet. Our objective is to tail them and find out what they're up to. Be careful not to arouse any suspicion. Yes, sir! Yikes, yikes. This could happen so quickly, like, the villains don't need to show up. I mean, they're literally, going, like, following them on their heels. Is it me, or is this season more tense? It's a little rough, which I guess is fitting, just because there's no there's no ceiling. You're just in the world, right? We're, we're Deku, and we're adults. And the world is cruel, you know, like, symbols aside, and all might aside, that 
is always sort of lurking in the ether. Who does Deku become amidst the discomfort and the pain? I mean, he's going to be Deku no matter what. That's why he's Deku, right? But it feels a little dark. And it wasn't even the villains this episode. It was Night Eye and his sort of anxiety or perhaps his own fear about the world kind of leaking through onto Deku. And all these kids are rushing into this hero study thing, not realizing that it's probably the last place they want to be right now. Aizawa and the administration correctly saw this, right? They realized the impending danger that a lot of the students are going to face in the world. There are just no no real safeguards you can count on at this point. You can't even count on society to want you. There's just a lot sort of floating in the air right now, which is kind of fun. And we got an end credit scene. Oh no, another alley. Another alley. Oh, it's Unicorn Girl from the intro. What is her significance? An amazing quirk, maybe? A quirk that they need? Is this a patrol? Is this happening now already? Are you okay? She was being followed by can I help you up? Beak Man. Why is she trembling like that? You should be more careful. Uh, uh, we don't want to cause trouble for the heroes. And just like that? First meeting, yeah. Literally just like that. Had begun. But, but, they're, what? They're not doing anything criminal, necessarily. It, it all depends on what this girl does or says from here on out. Weird, weird territory. I was just saying that, right? Like, this could literally happen in an instant. I didn't expect it to happen at the end of the episode. We're not wasting any time here at all. Work study started. Villain has been met. Chop, chop. This is the most anxious I've been watching this show. It's funny. I'm noticing myself like on edge. So very much looking forward to where this goes. I'll see you guys for the next episode where everything is surely sunshine and rainbows and Mineta finally secures his much anticipated work study offer.